Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you around Ableton Live 12. This video is especially for you even if you've never used the program before. I'll show you all the necessary basics of the interface and after today's video you'll be able to get started with making your own music. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel make sure to subscribe for more Ableton Live videos and if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production make sure to check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course where we go very in depth into everything we're going to be talking about here and this course is a really great start if you'd like to start making music in Ableton. All of the sounds that we're going to be using today will be linked as a free download in the description and with that link you'll also find a lot of other free downloads so you'll be able to get some sounds and get started right away. Alright so let's jump into the program. So if you're opening Ableton for the first time, it looks somewhat like this. Let's take a closer look at what we're seeing here. In the upper left corner, we have a browser. Here we've got a lot of sections with different types of sounds. And all we're going to be using for now is our folder, this beginner tutorial folder that I've added here. And here we have some sounds. You can also add your own folders here by just dragging and dropping them into under places. And this way you'll have much easier access to any samples that you have on your hard drive. For instance, here we have a clap sample. If we click on it and this headphones button is enabled, then we're going to be able to hear what it sounds like. And this is true for most of the content in the browser. We can also search. So if we have the beginner tutorial folder selected, we can search, for example, for kick. And you can see that we have a kick loop here. If you want to just stop playing the kick loop, you can just press space. We can click X to go out of the search. And on the right, this is where most of the magic happens in Ableton. Here's where we're going to be assembling our track. And we've got two primary views in Ableton Live. We've got the session view, which is what we're looking at right now. The session view has vertical tracks and the session view is most often used for songwriting or also for live performances. You also have the arrangement view and the arrangement view is used primarily to assemble tracks, to arrange tracks from start to finish and then to export them. And switching between these is really easy. You can just hit the tab key on the keyboard or you can just toggle around with these two buttons in the upper right corner. So for this tutorial, we are only going to be focusing on the arrangement view because this is what most music production programs have. Another thing that we need to take a look at at the beginning is the distinction between MIDI tracks and audio tracks. We've got two primary types of tracks in Ableton. The MIDI tracks allow you to play instruments, whereas on audio tracks you can just put audio samples and that's it. So for instance, if we have a kick loop, we can just drag and drop it on an audio track and it's going to be there and we can play it. By the way, playing is also done with space or if we delete it, just clicking on it pressing backspace, we want to have some instrument on the MIDI track. We just click on the MIDI track, search for an instrument. For example, we search for piano, go to instruments, upright piano, and we double click it and it's here. The instrument is loaded up. You can see on the track, it says upright piano, but now we need to play it or sequence it in some way. And just to show you what this upright piano sounds like, even if you don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in or you don't have a MIDI keyboard at all, that's not a problem. You can quickly preview the sound by pressing the keys on your keyboard. If this button right here is enabled, and then your computer keyboard can act as a piano keyboard. And pretty much if you press any key from A to L, so the second row of letters, so you are going to be playing the white keys just like on a piano. So it's a lot of fun playing around with uh, the computer keyboard, but of course a real keyboard is going to give you much, much more control. All right, I'm removing the piano for now. First of all, before you start recording, you might want to set the tempo of your project. Let's focus on the upper left corner of the screen. Here we have the tempo in beats per minute. So 120 beats per minute right now. You can drag this up or down. So if you click on it, just drag the mouse up or down, you can change it. You can also type it in so you can click on it, type in, for example, 110, enter. And now how do we preview this tempo? You can enable the metronome, which are these two dots here. If we just press space, you can hear the metronome. But for this track, we're just going to stay at the default tempo, 120 beats per minute. And for now, we can keep the metronome running. If you'd like to change the sound of the metronome, that's also possible from this drop-down menu. 
Now a very important thing is moving around in the arrangement and especially zooming in and out. All of this is done in this area above the timeline, so above the bar count right here. So you can zoom in and out whenever your mouse turns into a magnifying glass, basically right here. So for example, let's say we need to zoom in on the 17th bar right here. You can just hover your mouse over 17, click and drag your mouse down. And this is going to zoom in as far as you want. And then to go back, we just drag the mouse up. Okay, and we can do the same thing, for example, zooming to 1, dragging the mouse down. And for now, we're going to be working between 1 and 5, so we can zoom in to this place right here. Okay, let's put one of the audio tracks at the top. And the simplest thing we can do, if we go back to our folder with the samples, we can just drag in a kick loop. Now, if you have the tempo and BPM in the file name, that gets really easy. Uh, you just need to set your project to that tempo, so 121 BPM, drag and drop this loop onto the audio track. Then you need to double click it, and this opens up the clip view. And for now, all you need to know is just that you need to turn on warp. And now you can go back to 120, and your kick loop is going to play in that tempo. Why do we do this? Uh, it's just so that our loops that we import or any other samples basically are set to the correct tempo. Because if we turn warp off, you can see that the kick towards the end doesn't play on the grid. And this is what happens. It's playing too fast because it's at 121 BPM. So let's go back. To go back, you just need to press Ctrl and Z on Windows or Command and Z on Mac. And we have a nice kick loop. And to fold this view, you can either click this button right here at the bottom or just click this. Or you can switch between this view and this view by the shortcut Shift and Tab. And we'll get to this part in just a moment. Okay, so let's go on to the second track. This is a MIDI track. We're going to be adding a piano here. I'm just going to search for piano under Instruments and you can choose any of these. I'm going to choose the Upright Piano preset and we can play it now. If you can't play it with your keyboard, then just make sure this is enabled. Now you might want to record something in if you can't play the piano. And two things that are important. First of all, the track needs to be armed. So this dot with a note in it needs to be read. This just tells Ableton that, hey, we want to record this track. All you need to do is just search for the start point wherever you want to start recording. For instance, here, this is the record button. When we press this, We have now recorded our pattern. We can solo this piano by clicking this S button here. And I'm just going to disable the metronome. Okay, so we have the first pattern recorded. But let's say we can't play the piano. What do we do then? We can create a blank clip and draw in all of the notes. So let's select this area between one and five. These are four bars precisely. And right click on this area and go to insert empty MIDI clip. You can also see the shortcut for it right here. And already what we have is the clip view that has opened. You can make this bigger or smaller depending on your screen size and preferences this is where you can draw in the notes. But first of all, let's just go over the navigation here in the clip view. This works exactly the same way as in the arrangement. So if you hover your mouse over or slightly above the bar numbers, your mouse turns into a magnifying glass. You can also zoom in and out by dragging your mouse down or up. And also we have a piano roll on the left. And you can also scroll through it. So here where we have the note names, if you just hover your mouse and drag up, we are going down in the keyboard. And if we scroll down, then we are going up. These are going to be the higher notes. And the middle note is C3, always a very important note. And if you'd like to zoom in to see the notes more clearly, you can just click here and drag to the right. And now the notes are bigger. We are stretching the piano roll. If you want to make it smaller, same deal, but you just go to the left. Let's stick with the default size. And if you hover your mouse over the individual keys, you can see what these are exactly. So let's try drawing something in. The easiest way is just double clicking somewhere, for example, here, and you can extend this note by dragging the right end, and let's hear it. 
You can also choose the grid size. So you might not want to extend your notes every time like this. The grid size is really simple to change. So you just right click in the clip, you can choose the grid right here. Now we have 16th notes. So that means whenever we double click, we get a simple 16th note, but we can also choose, for example, quarter notes or even just one bar. So these are quarter notes. And if you'd like to add really much bigger notes, you can just click one bar. And this gives us only the option to add notes that are this length. So for instance, we can do this. And if you don't like double clicking every time you need to add a note, all you need is just enter the draw mode. And you can do that either by pressing this button right here or just clicking the B key. And now your mouse turns into a pencil here in the clip. So whenever you click on a note, it's just going to add a note there instantly. And if you click on it again, it removes the note. And the last very important element and a really useful element of the clip view is the scale mode. So here you can choose the scale. For instance, we have the C major scale selected right now. And if you click this button right here, the scale button, we are only getting the notes from that scale. So whatever you draw in here, you are never going out of the scale. So this is a really nice safe mode for experimentation and drawing in your patterns. And we are going to be using the scale mode today. A lot of tracks, especially EDM tracks, are written in the minor key these days though. So we can just choose minor right here and the C minor key is great to get started with. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down a bit here. You can do this by dragging this up or down or just using the scroll wheel. And I'm going to be adding four notes here for the base of our chords. These are going to be A flat 2, B flat 2, F2 and C2. So our progression, we can call it the 6, 7, 4, 1 progression. Chords are most often made by skipping over one note and adding the third and once again skipping one note and adding the fifth. So in this chord, not in the scale, in this chord, the A flat is the one, the C is the third, E flat is the fifth. We can do the same thing here and the same thing here and the same thing here. But a cool option if you have Live 12 is using this add interval option. So we can select the bottom notes. If you have the scale mode enabled, you can just drag this up and do add two scale degrees and do that once again. And we have formed the basic triads. I'm just going to turn these tracks down slightly so that we are not clipping. So if you hear distortions or in this area you see red, that means that you are clipping and you can just lower the gain on your tracks. And this is just done with this slider right here. We can invert some of these chords. So for example, we can take this note and put it down an octave so that we play F2, so this note instead of F3. And this is really easy. You can just hold shift and press the down arrow. We can do the same thing here with the C. Let's play it once again. And as you can hear, the inversion already makes the chord progression sound much better. What you could edit now is click on some of the notes, for example, on this note and change the velocity of the note. So if you expand this from the bottom and you click on some of the notes, you can choose how loud or quiet these notes are. And you can click on every individual note and shape them. So for example, right now, the top note is going to be the loudest and the bottom note's quietest. And by the way, I am previewing the notes by pressing this headphones button right here. And you could do that for every individual note, but what if we don't have time for this and we just want to humanize this because normally a piano player naturally doesn't play every note at the exact same volume. It changes slightly. So we can click randomize velocity. Now you can see that the last chord is going to be very quiet. So we can choose the amount of randomization here with this slider, maybe like this. And let's see what we have. We could take these three notes, so we can just select these and maybe 
lower these velocities and you can visually see how loud these notes are. So the first two notes are the loudest and then we are quieter and quieter. Okay, this is a nice first chord progression. You could also use something called midis and just add custom progressions already pre-made. We offer a lot of midis at Production Music Live. If we go into our folder, so you can see here we have a midi chord progression. You can click here to preview it with a synth. And you can just drop it onto your track. And here we have a slightly more elaborate version of what we've written out. If you double click on the chord, you can see we have just more notes, more elaborate versions. But yeah, we don't have the kick in this area, so you might want to either duplicate this loop, Ctrl and D, or you can go into the loop, double clicking, turning on loop, and you can just extend it as far as you want. Let's take a look at the device view. So not the clip view, but the device view. And at the bottom here on the MIDI track, you can see that we have the upright piano. We have some parameters for our piano. We could choose, for example, a higher reverb level or a higher re reverb time. And you can customize a lot of Ableton built-in instruments like this here with such macros. Let's just continue. So on the third MIDI track, we are, we're also going to drop a sample, but we can't drop the sample straight onto the MIDI track because it then becomes an audio track. Instead, we are going to be dropping this clap in this area where it says drop an instrument or sample here. You could also double click and it does the same thing if you have the MIDI track pre-selected. Now actually you can play your sample that we've dropped here just like the piano. It actually becomes an instrument. So this is called a simpler. This is a simple sampler device in Ableton. If we press higher keys on the keyboard, we go up with the pitch. And if we go down on the computer keyboard to do that, you need to press Z to go down an octave. Now it says your current octave is C2 to C3. We go down with the pitch. Let's click X to get back to C3. And C3 is the default pitch. So let's make a pattern that lasts one bar. Right click, insert empty MIDI clip. And we are going to be placing the clap on the point 1.2 and 1.4. And let's hear it. And if the sample is too short, it's cut off because the note is quite short. We can either extend these notes or we can just increase release and the effect is going to be similar. We have loop enabled here, so we can extend the clap over eight bars. We could add an effect on top of it. For example, this sounds pretty dry and we have a nice piano with lots of reverb on it and we might want to put reverb also on our clap. To do that, it's really easy. We just search for reverb, go into audio effects, or you can just choose reverb right here. You can either double click on it if you have the claps selected and it appears on the right, or you can just drag it onto the right side of the clap where it says drop audio effects here. And now we're also going to have reverb on this track. You can choose different parameters. For example, add less reverb with the dry wet or make the decay longer. And let's play everything together. One last thing that we're going to be adding today is on the last audio track, we're going to be putting a loop. By the way, if you've run out of tracks, you can just right click in this area right here, insert audio track, insert MIDI track. Let's not be bothered with return tracks for now. Let's go back to our folder and here we have a loop. This is a really nice groovy hat loop and this loop is in 120 BPM so we can just drop it onto the audio track directly but for your convenience I'm just going to rename it 120 BPM. Now let's hear everything. We could loop this if we double click on it, enable warping and enable looping, you can just extend this. Maybe this chord progression is quite melancholic, so let's just play the drums try. I'm going to disable the second track by pressing this button right here with the track number.
these drum tracks that we have already might be turned into a simple house track later on. All right, I hope this tutorial covers the very basics of navigation in Ableton, but if you'd like to explore Ableton even more and learn the software inside and out, along with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. And be sure to check out our music production academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment, and I will see you in the next ones.